It's been on the defensive end. That's where you've seen the difference. The guys play hard each and every night, and they're going to have to do that this afternoon to come away to victory against Liberty. And Liberty will take the tip and roll this around now. Elijah Coffey with the ball, and there's Georgie Pacheco Ortiz, the Puerto Rican, dishing it cross court. The Hatters, the Hatters are starting out in their zone defense. It's kind of a matchup but more of a zone defense. McGee with the miss, and the ball loose there. He'll get it back, and we set the clock here for Liberty. It's kind of a 1-3-1 one, one defense as you take a look at the starting five for Stetson. Yeah, Rob Perry's been a big one, and there's, a, oh, there's something Rob Perry likes to do, but that time, it's Liberty that gets on the board with the early tray. Yeah, Cuffey and Darius McGee, there are you guys. You're gonna have to spot up and know where they are in the zone defense and shade towards those guys. That's Jawara down low, the freshman. Cross court to Perry. Thought about the three. Now he takes up the shot from the baseline. No good. And the rebound, Caleb Holmes Lee ends of the Flames. Not a bad set for the Hatters. You want to try to get the ball in the hand of your scores. And Raw Perry had a good look at it. A mid-range jumper that he normally can pull down and make. That's Pacheco Ortiz cutting in to Scotty James and out of bounds on the Flames. They found a soft spot in that zone and uh, a nice bounce pass into James, but the Hatters able to get a hand on it, knock it off his knee. Now let's see if they can convert down here on the offensive end. Kenny Aninye, the junior, moving it up here for Stetson. A team that doesn't have a lot of seniors. Aninye kind of fills that veteran leadership role in a lot of ways. One he's of, got the ball again. The steady influence, and he's one of the guys that uh, if he's not clicking on all cylinders right away, you know, Coach Jones will go to the bench right away. And with four on the shot clock, not a lot of time. Jawar with the pump fake. Hey, what a block by Holmesley. I think Jawara thought it was goaltend, but they're not going to call it. I think most people in the building thought it was goaltend, and it looks as if it was on the way down, but a good block there by Holmesley. One of the high risers in the A-Sun. McGee with it in the corner, Pacheco Ortiz. No good in the rebound to Stetson and Rob Perry. He'll push it to Jones. Open it down the lane. What a flush it, but nice poke there from the Flames to get it away. Good control break by the Hatters. Pushing the ball up. Christian Jones, we want to get him involved earlier. He plays better when he scores early and quick and often, so nice push, but nothing there. Good defense by the Flames. Liberty to rotate. Top of the key three, and it's nailed by Darius McGee. And like that, Liberty with the first two buckets of the game, both trays. We talked about Darius McGee finding where he is, shading the shooters. He and Cuffey, those are the guys you're going to have to focus on within a zone defense. Pick and roll here as Perry sets it. Aninye trying to go around, and we're going to see a foul here. Looks like it's going to be on Liberty and Caleb Holmesley. The replay will show a good pick there by Kabimba. And just a little aggressiveness that they called, and Holmesley knew it right away, raised his hand. 20 on the shot clock now as Aninye takes the inbound. 17 minutes left in the first half. Stetson looking for its first bucket of the game. Pass inside to Jawara. He gets it and flushes it. That's what you like to see. I don't know how the pass got through there, but it got through. And Mr. Mohamedou Jawara shows you what he can do with it inside. Bit of a risky play there, but it gets Stetson on the board as they go with the press defense that worked so well for them against NJIT, Greg. Well, it's a 2-2-1 full court press that they want to take some time off, and they put it on only when it's made field goals, made free throws. That's Cuffey with it. Gets a bit of the blessing from the rim gods there, and Liberty once again up six. Finding the soft spot in the zone, and a nice touch by the lefty. The junior Nene dishes it to Kabimba down low. Jawara. And that's going to be a foul on Liberty. Nice work inside there by the headers. Getting it inside to your big guy. Mohamedou Jawara, as the replay will show you. Nice turn to the right. Goes back to the baseline. And Holmesley reaches in there. That may be number two for Holmesley. That is, that is number two for Holmesley. I was about to point that out. And that's an interesting scenario here, potentially, because are we going to see Holmesley leaving? It looks like it, because he's right next to the bench. Yeah, you'll probably see, yes. A uh, road, Kyle Road, who comes in and plays big minutes, and you see Mayo Baxter 
uh, who is a guy that's interesting as well that they run the offense through him when he's in the basketball game. So he handles the ball in the middle of the floor. So a couple yeah. of substitutions for Stetson as well. Wesa Panzo, Terry Ivory now in the contest. Aninye will take a seat, as will Kabimba. Like to see that there by Jawara making those free throws. And I thought Wenza Panzo, in his own way, had a very solid game against NJIT. Where he was a real spark off the bench. Multiple and multi-talented guy. They like to play him at two or three different positions, so he's a valuable piece to the puzzle. Liberty really pushing the ball around the arc. Cuffey will drive. The pump by Ivory. Out of bounds yeah. to Stetson. Uh, he can either get the other team in foul trouble. He can either score. He can make a pass out of the post. And that's something that he has to improve upon is passing out of the post. Panzo will inbound to Ivory here as we are under the 16-minute mark in the first half. Hatters down four. Rob Perry with it. Down low to Jawara against the big man Baxter Bell. And he forces the tough shot there as Liberty gets the ball back. Yeah, that's one of the strongest guys in the A-Sun, Baxter Bell, about a 240, 245, 250. So it's like a brick wall. You know, you got to have to go up strong right away. He's not going to block your shot, you know. So, so you don't have to worry about that if you're Jawara. As you see, the Hatters have kind of changed defenses now and a little more matchup. Little rotation there. And the three from McGee is no good. Rebound to Weza Panzo, and Stetson will push it. That's the freshman, Rob Perry. Now to Ivory, sets up near midcourt. Jones with it, now Panzo top of the key. Ivory down low to Jawara. Again against the big man Bell. And this time, a block from behind. Looks like Rode will be called for the foul. Uh, no foul, just good help there by, by Rode. You know, he's coming off, he's a handful Jawara inside. So. Once he makes that spin move, that's where the double team wants to come. It should have been a foul, but it wasn't. So just good help side defense by Kyle Rowe. Rob Perry with the inbound off the bat, off the glass, no good. And the rebound to Liberty and Elijah Cuffey. The Hatters got what they wanted inside. That's twice they were denied. But again, I think that's where that offense has to start, inside out. Aside. Liberty is doing an a nice job rotating the ball throughout this game. There's more rotation as McGee will take it. Cross court, Pacheco Ortiz. The freshman Kyle Rode, nice pass inside, but the shot no good and rebound to Stetson. Terry Ivory will push it. Good defensive series there for the Hatters and McGee having to put the ball on the floor. He'd rather be a CNS player, catch and shoot, but this time he put it on the floor and a little intimidation, unable to make the shot. Rob Perry behind the back there. Little flashiness as Ivory will call the play here. 10 on the shot clock. Habiba sets the pick. And he gets it. No, it's Jawara, excuse me. Foul on the way up, though, and Mohamedou Jawara is going to the line. Nice recognition by the headers as the replay will take a look at it. But the bounce, he did not need. Take your pick. Baxter Bell fouled him and Rhodes fouled him. Well, Baxter Bell's who they picked. Being able to catch it and go straight up and dive, what we call dive to the basket as a big guy. He put it on the floor and gave the defenders a time, uh, an opportunity to catch up. And Liberty will sub out here. Scotty James back in the game. As Caleb Holmesley sits on the bench still for Liberty. Jawara with four double-doubles this year, Greg. You know, when he plays well and when he gets the temps, good things happen. You know, of the 10 wins, he's averaged almost 10 attempts a game. So you want to be able to get him the basketball and let him go to work. Let the big dog eat. <laughs> so you got to give him the basketball. All right, now the big dog sits. Kabimba back in. As we are under the 14-minute mark here, first half. Bit of a low scoring one so far as both teams are still trying to find their offensive footing. And Liberty again, they're very deliberate on offense. They know what they want to do. Baxter Bell there, no good, and we're going to see a foul called here. And from Terry Ivory's look, it's on him. And Coach Jones can't believe it. He's, he's saying, boy, that was a good defensive set by my team. Baxter Bell making a strong move. And uh, the call was on Panzo. Yeah, oh, well, a little hand in the back there. If he had that, both hands up, he had the hand in the, in the lower back. 
Some more subs here as Shiloh Robinson now enters the game for Liberty. One of their first guys off the bench usually as Baxter Bell takes a seat. Well, you have Road and Robinson. Robinson, the freshman out of Nebraska, good looking player. Those are the interior guys who are gonna come in for the Flames. And they use them quite frequently. Coffee with it, McGee. That's Pacheco Ortiz, kick out back to Coffee, back to McGee for three. Good. Bottom of the net and Liberty back up six. Well, again, he's the guy that you're going to have to find in that zone defense. So when Pacheco Ortiz drove to the basket, rotation happened. So the rotation didn't happen far enough. So you got to find out where that young man is because that's what he does. Rob Perry, long distance. Off the back iron, rebound to Liberty and Scotty James. And we should mention Jaleel Rowley now in the game for Stetson, too. Another guy who's really had an impact off the bench. His two turnovers at NJIT were a huge difference in the game. Yeah, those two steals. He's one of the, the top steal guy in the A-Sun. So gets his hands on a lot of balls, deflects a lot of passes. Quickness, Latrell, Spreewell look alike. <laughs> Love the hair. Pacheco Ortiz from deep, and he gets it. Liberty just raining threes all over the gym right now, 14-5. Well, I suspect that Coach Jones is going to make that defensive change and get out of that zone, you know, I saw because you know, you're not matching up and finding those shooters. Terry with it. That's Panzo now off the hands of Kabimba and out of bounds. And a bad pass. You know, he did not have the angle. And, and uh, when a guy is posted up in the post, if you're not shoulders to shoulders with that uh, the guy that's passing you the basketball outside, you're going to most of the times you're going to have a turnover like that. That wasn't the angle to make that pass. And we're seeing a little veteran leadership in now as a result. And Inye back in, Jones back in, Kabiba now in as well as Jawara. So as Perry takes a seat, Ivory too, and Raleigh also. You know, the 2-2-1 two -two zone press, a lot of coaches like it. And, you know, Denny Crum, Louisville, one of those guys that use it a lot. But it's really just to slow down a team. It's not really to come up with that. If they turn the ball unforced error, great. But it's really just to slow the pace of the game down. But Liberty, they're not in a, in a hurry to do anything. They play very deliberate. Oh, when you're hitting threes the way they are right now, you it's don't need you the need. push. You're yeah. exactly right. Raleigh in the corner. That's Jones. Now it's Jawara, the big man on Scotty James. Trying to spin move. Off the back iron, rebound to Shiloh Robinson. Good defense. James kept his ground, and that's where Muhammadu is going to get better next year. That left hand, it would have been that nice left hand jump hook, I saw it, you know, right there in that situation. Reaching the 11 minute mark now in the first half. Down low, Scotty James, he's working on Jawara. Left hand up and in. And and he, yeah, he's, he's very capable of scoring inside, strong, one of the strongest guys in the, in the A-Sun and one of the top offensive rebounders, but he's able to use both hands. What Muhammadu, he take note of that, you know, was unable to do in the play before. Liberty for the first time in this game up double digits. That's Raleigh with it, Kabimba. He wants to go down low to Jawara. He had him. He had to make the bounce, simple bounce pass. S six seconds on the shot clock. Jones trying to force it. Step back three. No good, rebound by Kabimba, but... Yeah, teams to just 51 points a game, so, you know, teams struggle against them. They're going to play position defense. They're last in the A-Sun in fouls per game, so they don't foul. So this is, this is a tough matchup, and, and like we said, you're going to have to be mentally in the game for 40 minutes. Coffee with the ball now for Liberty. Now yeah. McGee as they rotate around. And just what we figured, they're out of that zone defense and man-to-man -man right now. That's James with it, kicks it out, Shiloh Robinson, three. Rattles in and out in the rebound to Rob Perry. A great defensive stand, that's exactly what you want. That's a capable shooter, but that's not the guy you want shooting the ball if you're Liberty. Perry with the driving kick, Jaleel Raleigh with it now. As Stetson's trying to do their own rotation as Liberty's been doing this entire game. Jawara down low, up and in. I like to see him go straight up and flush it. You don't have to pump fake. You know, those guys, they're not going to, they're going to stay at home and they're going to play position defense. Stetson out with seven points. It's all come from Mohamedou Jawara. <laughs> Glad he came over from the, from the athletic dorms <laughs> to play this afternoon. Scotty James down low with it. Jawara on him. Right hand, no good. Rebound to Christian Jones. 
You're getting exactly what you want out of that man-to-man -man defense. You're having a one-on-one -on -one situation, and so far the Hatters are handling it. And Liberty, they're getting the shot they want. I saw just not going down. An Indian out with the ball near the circle. Jawara looking to set the pick for Perry. He'll take it. Drive and in. Rob nice. Perry with a nice right-hander. And a great recognition by Nene, knowing that, hey, it's too crowded where I am. Let me change positions with you. You come to the top. You run the two-man game. Caught Liberty off guard. He took it straight to the bucket. And the Hatter's now down seven. As the Edmonds center gets a little riled up right now. Cuffey down low to James. Back to Cuffey for three. In and out, and Jaleel Raleigh skying <laughs> for the rebound. He'll push the parry. He likes taking it from that distance. He, he won't will. there. He will take it from that, <laughs> that position. You know, that's the uncanniness of him and his set shot that he has, a quick release. We're approaching the eight-minute mark here in the first half. Three ball, no good. Back iron and Liberty with the rebound there and Scotty James. And James, you know, slipped a little and he's saying, hey, that's a wet spot on the floor, so hopefully you have somebody attending to that. Coffey pitching it low to James up and in. Bit of an unusual entry pass there, Greg, but it worked. But that's, that's what Scotty James does. He loves the post, he loves the seal, but it's a great pass by Cuffey. You know, normally, you, you know, you're taught to make that pass to the corner of the backboard to your offensive teammate, and that's what he did. Perry wide open, three, no good. And the rebound again, Scotty James doing a nice job blocking out Jawara. One and done. Again, a veteran-laden team. They're in position defensively, boxing out. So the Hatters have to a little more ball movement. James down low against Jawara here. Wearing the pink sneakers in this game is James, and he puts in another bucket here as Liberty extends the lead. It's 20 to nine. Yeah, he's a handful inside. Now, this is a thousand point score as well. You know, we talked about uh, Pacheco Ortiz, and we talked about Holmesley. They have 3,000 point scores. Only one other team in the country has that. So you're going to have to help. There's Rob with a nice drive. You're going to have to help, you know, when Scotty James gets the ball in the post. Somebody, you're going to have to run a double team at him and dig in the post. You can't let him just hold the ball for four or five seconds and make two or three moves. That other team you're referring to, the Richmond Spiders. The Richmond Spiders. One of the best nicknames in college basketball, in my opinion. James cutting in, and that's going to be a foul on Stetson. So James will go to the line here. The ball has been played. You have a leader, you know, and a guy in Pacheco Ortiz, and you have a big guy in, in the post. And we haven't even talked about the A-Sun preseason player of the year who's in foul trouble, Holmesley. So they're just a good basketball club. Scotty James, one of the senior leaders that we've been referring to. Misses the free throw there. He's been averaging only 20 minutes a game so far this year, Greg. But in that 20-minute stretch, nearly a double-double, 10.7 yeah. boards. Yeah, you know, they don't, nobody plays a lot of minutes except Darius McGee. He plays the most minutes on the team, and that's why I call, I refer to him as the X Factor, because that young man is, uh, he puts the ball in the basket, and he can, you know, do some multiple things. Even though I really like Pacheco Ortiz, that's the floor general, but Darius McGee, that's the X factor for the Liberty Flames. Liberty again stretching the lead at double digits. Rob Perry with the ball. Goes cross court to Raleigh. Kambiba now to Panzo. Raleigh here as a reset with eight on the shot clock. To Perry. Cuts between two flames up and in. Beautiful scoop move there, Rob, knowing that the shot clock is winding down, and instead of jacking up a shot, he takes it to the basket strong. We've talked a lot about his three-point ability, Greg, but I really believe his driving from the, from the arc is sort of underrated for him. Getting better and better each and every game. Baxter Bell trying the cut pass, and it did not work. We talk, yeah, we talked about Baxter Bell being able to spearhead the offense and, and it's interesting they give him the ball in the circle and he really runs runs the offense so he's able to be able to dribble and make some passes that time a little bit too far ahead hatters down eight now aninye with the ball to raleigh now aninye back top of the key as we approach the five minute mark here in the first half everybody putting pressure on the ball handler six on the shot clock 
Perry step back three. No. Rebound to Kyle Road in Liberty. Had to shoot it, but that was a long, a long shot attempt there, but the shot clock going down. One of the quickest shot releases I've ever seen at the college level. And he's only a freshman. Bit unusual, but it works for him. McGee with a more conventional, yep. and it goes through. And as I say, that's the X factor on the team. You have to know where he is. He hurts you because of his long range shooting ability. And again, he's taken coming into this game 112 uh, three point attempts and only 35 two point attempts. So that tells you where he operates from. Perry with the ball now, left wing. He tried to cut down low to Kabimba. Great save play there from Baxter Bell, but he's hurt. I think he slipped on the way down. Yeah. A lot of man right there, so I think he may have fallen on a, you know, awkwardly. As we take a look at it here, good hustle by the senior from Cincinnati. And yeah, just a hard fall on the backside. He has a lot of protection <laughs> with six. that body. But uh, even 6'6", six, six, what, two, 270. They yeah, they yeah he's technically it. listed at 6'5", 270. So that's a tight end, a defensive end. I mean, that could be a D-end. On any level, on yeah. any level. That could be a D-end in the NFL with yes, that size. Yes, But I think that awkwardness just fallen on it and may have scared him more than anything. I don't think he fell on his head. I think just more on the, the back, lower back part. And they're going to help him up now. Fortunately, he won't have far to walk to get to the bench. But, right. it, does, but it does allow us to... Reset things a little bit here, and especially for Donnie Jones, Greg, who right now is really trying to find some answers offensively for his team. Yeah, it's, it's offensively and defensively. You know, they've made some changes. They've gone from the zone, the matchup zone, to the man-to-man. -to -man, so, uh, but offensively, you're right. But this is what Liberty does. I mean, they stifle teams defensively. Uh, people are shooting an atrocious uh, three-point field goal shooting percentage against them. So... And it's just a smart basketball team. You're going to have to be patient, but you're going to have to move the basketball a little more. Some more picks. Stetson now at 29% shooting from the field. That's actually an improvement <laughs> at this point in the game. Nice poke away there from Panzo. Out of bounds, though. Liberty will retain with 14 on the shot clock. Yep. Wells are playing the passing lanes, and, and the Hatters are going to have to generate some offense with defense. Panzo, the only Canadian on the roster. Sneaky good from three, by the way. Nine for 18 in his last four games. Down low to James. Cross court. That's McGee for three. Yes. Yeah. Splash down all the way, and Liberty extends the lead now to 14. X factor. <laughs> the X factor for the Flames. You know, he's coming off 19-point performance and then lost to North Florida. So, very capable shooter. Raleigh with it, hands off the Panzo. Jawara top of the key, Steps and travel. he traveled. Yes, he did. That was fired up, and they're going to need that and a little more, so it's a good contingent of people from Lynchburg, Virginia here as well. Cut well, pass. For the Flames. Cut pass there almost didn't work for Liberty. With 12 on the shot clock, though, they have one more shot at it. Pacheco Ortiz thinks about the three. He'll drive it. And looks like we're going to have a foul on Stetson here. Looks like Panzo with it. Yeah. That's a second, I believe. Yeah, Weza trying to keep up with uh, the crafty Pacheco Ortiz. And that's where he's so valuable when the shot clock winds down. There's Pacheco Ortiz in and out. Should be a foul over the back there by Robinson. And it is. Good defensive series there for uh, the Hatters. And that's Liberty's fourth foul in this half. But it's been a fairly clean game in terms of fouls so far, and also in terms of turnovers, where Not Stetson's really struggled is in putting the ball in the bucket. Yes. Ivory, the Panzo. Perry, Jones now, the Jawara. Good ball movement from Stetson. The big man puts the shoulder down yes. and gets it in. Nice array of moves, but he didn't need but one of those. Just go straight up. Baxter Bell is not going to block your shot, you know, so, and he's not, he's not going to follow you, so just go straight up on the initial move and make it. Under three minutes now in the first half. Pacheco Ortiz to Baxter Bell, the big man, tries to drive in, and he gets it. No, wave the bucket off. <laughs> Foul on Liberty. And, and Robinson is saying, hey, it was around the wheel, around the cylinder, I did not touch it. 
if anybody touched it, maybe a hatter touched it, as Richie McKay is arguing with the officials. But there's the layup there by Baxter Bell. And nobody I think really got, touched it. I yeah. think he got the rim, though, with his hand. Maybe you're right. Maybe just interfering. You can't touch the cylinder or be anywhere inside of it when the basketball is on the rim. Panzo, wide open three. Yes! I don't Whoa, know that looks weird. <laughs> don't know if he intended to make it, but the Hatters will take it. You normally don't see a bank from the corner like that, but it works for Stetson, and that, I believe, is their first three of the game. First made one, anyway. We talked about a danger period for the Hatters when they were down 14. And uh, Baxter Bell, again, trying to make something. Though. Let's see if Stetson can maybe make the job a little easier for themselves. Entering the half with under two minutes here. Terry Ivory with the ball to his fellow freshman in Perry. I like how the Hatters have been moving the basketball from side to side. Jawara trying to get yeah. the entry pass. That's going to be a foul on Liberty, yeah. and it'll be on James. James. Yeah, James, you know, it just looks it just looks so inviting. When you're the only guy in the post and that guy's behind you, you see that ball lofted in there, you feel like you can. <laughs> but you can't go through an offensive player to get to the basketball. Ivory to inbound to Perry. Clock resets now to 20. A new rule put in college basketball this year. Ivory tried to save it but could not. Unforced error and Ivory should have been right there to receive it. He was saying it's my fault. You know, why is he cutting towards the basket? He's trying to fill a gap that nobody else to really fill with. So, you know, Perry is like, man, where were you? He's going to receive the ball back. But let's see if the Hatters can come away with something. And let's see if you're the Flames, if you can finish up the half strong. Last time out, Liberty lost to UNF. A rare ace on loss for them. It's been even longer since they've lost two in a row. James with the ball, the Pacheco Ortiz. Good rotation from Liberty as McGee gets it. The coffee for three. The lefty misses, rebound, long one to Stetson. Jones will push. Great rotation defense there by the Hatters. And with under a minute left here in the first half. Let's get something good. Set your offense up, let's get something good. Ivory with it. They, near the midfield, near the midcourt circle. They've been effective with the two-man game with it. There's Gerara. Outside pass yeah. to Panzo, and... Yeah, that's, that's not the play you want. You know, you really want the two-man game with Jawara and Perry. And that time, again, Ivory making a play, trying to make something out of nothing. That's not really your play right there, you know. You still had a lot of time left on the shot clock. Rob is out there wide open. The two-man game with... Perry and Jawara has been the most effective. Coffee there, a Cuffy there, excuse me, doing a nice job setting his feet for charge. The Hatters will get another opportunity, but now they're going to have to play some tough defense. They won't get much time if they get any at all. Cuffy with it now. Road trying to set the pick. The Pacheco Ortiz in the right wing. It looks like a foul. I'm... Let's see who this is on. Yeah, looks like Kabimba. a Bimba. Yeah. Again, Kabima gets caught a lot of times using his hands, and he's trying to get around in the post, and that's really nothing. But the officials saw the flail in there by good acting job by Scotty James. And now Liberty can really run the clock down if they want. Stetson most four or five seconds. About a four-second differential here as Pacheco Ortiz gets it. Drives down the lane. Off the glass, no good, and foul on Stetson here from the looks of it, and Kabimba, I believe. Two quick fouls for the big man as we near the end of the half. We take a look at Pacheco Ortiz taking advantage of the defense there. He saw an opening, took it strong to the bucket. And Kabimba was skeptical. Not, yeah, they could not rotate fast enough. Kabimba a bit skeptical on that one. You can see it in his face. as Pacheco Ortiz nails the first. Liberty's best free throw shooter by a country mile. 95% this year, Greg. He's only missed two all year long. They have quite a few good free throw shooters on the team, you know. They have him, they have uh, Cuffey as well. He's a good free throw shooter, so that's another reason why we previewed at the top of the telecast Pacheco Ortiz, coach on, on the floor. 10 on the clock here, Stetson. Where do you think we're gonna see out of here? Well, I think you're going to see that two-man game, you, you know, and it's going to have to go quick because you only have 
seven seconds. Inbound from the backcourt. Ivory trying to drive around. And the foul on Liberty here. And by design, Dean yeah. was put in the game to, hey, let's foul right away. And uh, we're not in the bonus. As a matter of fact, we have one more foul before we're in the bonus. Took some time off the clock. Make it tough for Stetson to get a shot off. 4.5, not a lot of time. Basically catch and shoot. Yeah, so now you're going to have to get it up quickly. Ivory will deliver to Perry. Step back three. Off the glass, no good. And that's how we end the first half. The class of the ASUN, the Liberty Flames. So you will feel good about yourself if you can come away with a victory and, and, a, and a good comeback against this ball club. Rob Perry with it now. That'll be Kenny and Inye. When's Panzo getting the start here in the second half after he started the game on the bench? Well, Kabimba has some foul issues too, and uh, Liberty, they've been in that man-to-man, -man, tough man-to-man -man the rest of the game, all game. Chawara facing up Scotty James, and he gets it started the right way for the guys in the green and white. Again, he's not going to try to block your shot. Most of the time, shot blocks for Liberty, they come from the off guy coming over to help. But uh, Jawara can take his time and just turn around, make a good, strong move, and go straight up. Caleb Holmes will be back on the floor. He had himself a nice long rest in the first half, thanks to two quick fouls. People want to see that young man. We have a couple of scouts here to see him. He's a, a lefty. Reminds me a lot of a uh, couple of players that comes to mind. You know, he shoots a soft touch like Goose Givens. He jumps like Rodney Hood, and he kind of handles the ball like Joe Ingles of Utah. So a combination of all those players. Kenny and Inye now with the ball, top of the key. So a slashing Rob Perry. Bit of a wild shot, but does not get the blessing from the rim gods there. Out of bounds. Going, looks like Stetson will keep it here with a fresh shot clock. And Rob is looking for a foul, but nothing there. But that's where that left hand this one is going to come in handy for he and Jawaro. They're going to work on that. I know they will to expand their games. Aninye trying to inbound. He does to Perry. Wide open three. First one of the game for the freshman. I hate to recite Mark Jackson, but man down. <laughs> hand down. 29-23, Liberty up. Bit of a fortunate break for the Hatters, but they cashed in. It was. I mean, when he received the basketball, Rob Perry couldn't believe it. He looked and said, man, you're on the floor. Okay, I have to shoot this. Well, the way Liberty plays defense, you can, you can hardly blame him for that. Scotty James down low, poked away, and Stetson gets the turnover. Anindia pushing it to Perry. In the corner, Jones, now Perry again. Long distance three! He hit that from Daytona! And we talk about how the Hatters is going to need to score and make some shots. And Rob Perry has that unorthodox looking release that people think he's not going to shoot the basketball, but he has long range and he's so comfortable shooting with that quick trigger release. And don't look now, Greg, but Stetson started this half on an 8-0 run. Pacheco Ortiz, cross court, Cuffy three, no. Long rebound to Anenye, fight on the floor for it. And looks like we've got a injured flame. I'm thinking that's Holmesley. And I hope it's, no, that's the little fellow, McGee. Um, yep, it's yeah, it uh, is Darius, McGee. Darius it is McGee. McGee is, goes for the steal. Good hustle by Anenye, a long rebound. And it looks like when he fell, he kind of rolled on top of him. and. Maybe more than anything, he's scared. I, th I thought it was just some floor burns because we heard it from where we are, uh, Assad. I mean. And it looks like R and Richie McKay is uh, really pleading this case here. He wanted a foul on Inye, I think. Although, really, you no. know, when you, when you get those scrums on the floor, anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, that was the right call there by the officials because Inye stole the basketball, the long rebound, and was dribbling down, and he was kind of undercut by Darius McGee. We're glad that young man is okay. And take another look at the long rebound. So yes, so he kind of, not undercut, but he, you know, was in the path of a Nene. So the foul was the right call on Darius McGee. Shiloh Robinson now will enter the game for McGee. He'll take a seat. So uh, sort of a big lineup here for Liberty. Sort of. And, and just what the Hatters needed, you know, coming out to start the half, making some shots, good defensive series. Liberty, kind of a quick shot. They don't normally do that on their offensive end. Down low to Jones. Anenye with it. 
Hatters quick, with the yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. So that was a quick double team in the post, and Jones got it out quickly. Speaking of the post, that's where they go. Jawara blocked by James on the way up. And the Flames get the ball here. Stetson, first time in a while there with a chance to tie the game, but it didn't work for him. Well, uh, you don't need to pump fake. One hard dribble and go up. You're under the basket. You're two feet from the basket. That's something Jawara is going to learn. And when he looks at this film of this game, he's going to see that. All he had to do was just go straight up. Shiloh Robinson keeps getting Jawara up in the air, but the defense works. And Jones will push it down the court. Vice it in. Beautiful, beautiful one-on-one. -on -one. This is the drill that you practice. And sometimes you're in practice. When am I going to get a one-on-one -on -one situation full court? And he took a nice dribble all the way and laid it up. Beautiful by Christian Jones. Stetson with 10 points to start the second half. Richie McKay going to his reinforcements. Long distance three there, nailed by Caleb Holmesley. Well, Holmes is showing you why he was the preseason pre A-Sun player of the year. I've been sitting on the bench a lot, foul trouble this first half. Don't forget about me, people. I'm a thousand point scorer as well. And he's actually the top scorer of the actives in Liberty's roster right now. And then Ye, bounce pass to Jones, cutting in. Another leg in, that one not going through. And Pacheco Ortiz will take it for the Flames. You will see Liberty with some control fast breaks, but they do not push the basketball up full fast break. They play very deliberate pace. Holmesley three. Off the back iron. It's got to be a foul. And it is. No, I was going to say their half-court defense is so stifling. If you can get out and run and get some points. Rob Perry, the leader in the ace on three-point wise for a reason. He's awful mm. good at it. Absolutely even, right. Even with that unconventional uh, shooting motion of his. Ivory with the ball to Jones. Panzo. That's Jawara down low. Backs the bell trying to body him up, and they're going to call Jawara on the offensive foul. And No uh, traveling. He moved his feet. Oh, excuse yeah. me. Yep, the travel there, and he's having a hard time believing that one, Greg. Yeah, he's waiting. He's waiting too long. Yep, he moved yep. his feet. The pivot it's foot moved. Backs to Bell is not going to block your shot. Make your move and turn around and dunk the basketball or just lay it in. I don't know how many times I have to say this. Maybe I have to go across <laughs> to the Stetson bench and let Jawara you know, know that and understand that this is a disciplined defense team. They're not going to follow you. Pacheco Ortiz now with the ball. Six on the shot clock for Liberty. He may need to get the shot off quickly here. Slashing in is Holmesley, and he does not get the kiss of the rim there. That play developed late for Liberty, but yeah. it developed nicely. He had the look. Ordinarily, you would see a monstrous ESPN top 10 dunk there by Holmesley, you know, with Pacheco Ortiz getting the ball to him. But fortunate for the Hatters, man, he laid it up, missed it, and, and you're fortunate Juara didn't get a foul on that play as well. Under 15 minutes to go here in the game. Hatters down four after they started a half down 11. Perry slashing in, tries to go up. Tie up. I've seen it all. And that'll go jump to Liberty. Ball. He calls a jump ball. And that's a tough call. Could have very well been a charge. Yep, possession arrow was in Liberty's favor, so they'll get it. Take a look at the highlight here is before the charge, Pacheco Ortiz tied Rob Perry up. And you know, I think Coach Jones would take that than a foul on Rob Perry in that instance. Well, he's getting a little laugh out of it. He's having a hard time believing it is Donnie Jones, but you know, entering the season for Stetson, a lot of people would have had a hard time imagining how well they've played so far. Already more wins now than they did at any point last year. Pacheco Ortiz, down low to Baxter steps, Bell. Steps. And yeah. the big man walked. Well, Liberty is a little out of sync offensively, and I think they're playing a little faster pace than they ordinarily want to or even really need to. So the Hatters have forced that and put a little pressure on the Flames. Jawara down low, double teamed, kicks out. Perry, the three. Yes! Nice recognition by Jawara in the post. He felt the double team. He dribbled out of it, made a cross court pass to Rob Jones, who was catch and shoot, seeing player ready, knocked it down. Rob Perry with three threes in this game. They've all come in the second half. Liberty trying to stem the tide here. Pacheco Ortiz, step back. No! Jawara with the rebound, and the Hatters with a chance to take the lead here. They've not had it at any point in this game. 
It looks like Stetson will slow down here a little bit, Greg. You do. You need that because Ivory wants to go fast. And the two-man game there, maybe with Perry, or get in the post to Jawara. Eight on the shot clock. Jones with it now. Not a lot of time. Jawara will set the pick. The junior will drive it. Poked away. Shot clock violation. And that'll be Liberty Ball. Pacheco Ortiz going all the way near the entrance doors here at the Edmonds Center. Nice defense there from Liberty. And the way they play defense, Greg, you can really see the uh, the impact that Virginia had on uh, on Richie McKay, I think. Yeah, I mean, just good hands defense there by Pacheco Ortiz. Retreating, but managed to get his hand on the basketball. And yeah, you're talking about Tony Bennett at Virginia. I mean, he was the associate head coach, McK uh, Richie McKay, for about six years with Virginia. So yeah, they do play similar. They believe in ball control and everybody moving defensively. That was a cut play there. Jaleel Raleigh jumped the lane, and it's going to be out of bounds on him. So it looks like Liberty will keep this with 10 on the shot clock. And speaking of defense, Jaleel Raleigh is one of the top defenders for the Hatters, the number one steal guy in the A-Sun. So he gets his hands on a lot of basketballs. Pacheco Ortiz will inbound. Scotty James trying to gather it up. Christian Jones will be called for the foul, though. Silly foul. Just, just, just a silly foul. I don't think he really saw, but how could you miss big Scotty James? He's 6'8", 240. So uh, trying to come away with a big steal there. but Resets the shot clock, too. So about 12 minutes here left in this game. Cuffey to Pacheco Ortiz. Down low to James. A little help. You're going to need a little help in the post. And he gets it, but he dishes the Shiloh Robinson. And he'll put it down. The stretch the lead back to three for Liberty. But just a bad rotation. I mean, you had Ivory rotating to double the post, but, you know, nobody rotated over for his man. I don't know if that was the right rotation. He was trying to help in the post, which was probably instructed by the coaching staff. Ivory down the lane, blocked. But he tried to get the ball back. It goes out of bounds. Yep, and Stetson I, will retain. I've uh, over time to score a situation basketball, and uh, you know it's just it's a it's a matter of when you push it and when you make the right pass and when you take the right shot. So, you know this is a veteran ball club, and every possession is costly. Ivory on the bench as is Rob Perry, but yep. he's about to check back in as Panzo has the ball top of the key. Jones with it now. That's Panzo trying to back down Robinson. And the Canadian puts it up, doesn't get it. The rebound to the Flames. I don't know why Raleigh had the post. He had Jawara right in front of us opening the post. You got to get that pass in there to him. Nobody was from the backside either. Shiloh Robinson trying to dish that in the corner. Looks like out of bounds on Stetson. Shiloh was saying it was tipped, and I believe he's right. As Perry and Kabimba now checks back in. Kyle Road about to do the same for the Liberty Flames, 2019 Kentucky Mr. Basketball nominee, the highest recruit in Liberty history. That was a great... Uh... Inbound, Pacheco missing, but Liberty gets the rebound back. And it looks like we're gonna see a foul on... No, the shot clock, they're looking at the shot clock. The shot clock. clock didn't reset, I'm sorry. Right. Uh... It reset, it went back to 30. It should have been back to 20, and a few seconds rolled off, so they're going to put it at 17. I was going to say, I saw that Shiloh Robinson gave them some very good minutes in the interior for a Liberty, and, and Rode is back in the game. So Richie McKay has done a great job with using his big guys and, and substituting them. There's Rode. Open three, missed it in the rebound to Kenny and Inye and Stetson. Hatters with a chance to tie the game with a three. Well, Road had to shoot it, you know, open shot. That's not exactly, he can make those. He's been shooting them at a decent clip, but he was so wide open, he had to take it. Rob Perry's hit three threes in the second half. Big reason why the Hatters have cut this deficit down. And Inye with seven on the clock. Kabimba from the free throw line. Off the back iron and the rebound to Liberty. Had a nice look. Anine on the pick and roll with Gerrara. Didn't quite find him, and we see a collision. Anine versus James, and the foul will be against... It'll be on Anine. I think James set his feet. 
him and them flashy pink sneakers of his. Yeah, but this is your teammates uh, having to tell you that, man, hey, pick left, pick left. You have to talk. I don't think he extended his arm or. So a bit of a miscommunication, you think? Yes, yes, but they were, they were, the pick was set so far out. And I don't know who, if anybody was guarding James, I think the Hatters may be coming back into their zone defense. So, but you have to have communication. Someone has to say pick left, pick left. And we're going to see Terry Ivory come back in as Aninye gets a little bit of help off the court with a trainer near him. And this is going to be a crucial point in the game. Now you have Ivory, who again is energetic and uh, presses the issue. And I think the coaching staff are going to elect to go with the man to man. You know, kind of the zone defense. He may move around and tries to cover so much ground. They're actually more like a, a box in one. He's on Darius McGree, uh, McGee, Ivory is. Everybody else is playing kind of a matchup of zone defense. Caleb Holmesley with it now. Drives in, tries to go left hand, poked away by Kabimba. Out of bounds, and it'll be Stetson Ball. The big man with a nice job there. Well, Kabimba sheepishly, sheepishly <laughs> stuck his hand in there, and, and surprisingly, he didn't get a foul. And Coach McKay is just looking at the officials and said, man, that should have been a foul. You got to get him in the post right there. You got to throw it in there. That's Raleigh with it. Rob Perry, who's been hot in this half. Terry Ivory down low. He wants the big man, Jawara. Flushes it, but that's not going to count. Yeah, they're going to call a foul that he hooked the defenders there. Jaleel Raleigh has had him open twice, looking right at him in the post. Now they throw him in the post on the, on the left side of the block, and they double team him. And with three fouls now, uh, Jawara is going to have to come out of this. Kabiba also with three fouls, so we, that may be yeah. a factor as this game goes on, Greg. It, it, it's going to be a huge factor because now where is your offense going to come from? Rob Perry is your leading scorer, but, you know, he can't generate offense by himself, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Pass down low to James, fights through the double team to get the bucket. And right away, Liberty takes advantage of Jawara being on the bench. They throw it inside to the big fella. He's good at posting and sealing up his defenders and gets a wide open. Kabiba trying to set the pick. He'll cut to the basket now as Perry will now try to drive in and... Hands. Yep. It's a little foul there by... I think that's on... Yes, Holmesley. Which is his third foul now. Yeah. So he's now looking at some foul trouble as well. Those two quick fouls early in the first put him on the bench. Yes. But right now, though, Richie McKay's going to roll with him. As we are under 10 minutes now in the second half. Somebody else is going to have to help Mr. Perry. He tries to drive in, goes up, and he's fouled on the way up. And here's the ability to take the ball to the basket and able to do it because he hit some big time shots from three. Everybody's playing the three and he's able to take it to the basket. He's going to get two free throws. And not only that, but we should know that fouls on Holmesley. Holmesley. That's his fourth. So now he's going to the bench for sure here, Greg. Yeah, but you've had Shiloh Robinson to step up and play big minutes and play well, and he's going to come in the game for him. Perry's first free throw is good. And it's never a good thing when your leading scorer and uh, a son preseason player of the year goes to the bench. But Liberty has played the majority of the game without him, and they've been effective so far. Yeah, you want to have him in there on the game, but they're going, they've been used to playing without him this game. And let's see how it goes for the Hatters. We've been stuck on 34, 31 for a while, and now it's 36, 33. So the Hatters, if they can keep it close, stay with Liberty. And McGee loses his shoe right there, gets it back on. He's going to be running a little weird here during this set for sure. Robinson with it. Pacheco Ortiz from deep. Misses, but the long rebound to Liberty. Scotty James. Christian Jones, you got to get that rebound. Good defensive series early on in the shot clock. Liberty gets a shot up. You got to come away with that rebound. Every possession is crucial when you're playing against the Liberty Flames. Bit of confusion here, I think. Well, McGee managed to get his shoe back on, so it's that's not the issue. 
But anyway, Liberty will inbound here. Under nine minutes left, second half. And here's the boxing one defenses. Ivory is chasing McGee all over the floor. That's Pacheco Ortiz. Misses again. He's been a cold, and Stetson will try to take advantage. Raleigh with it now. Yep, nothing there, nothing there. So good retreating defense by Liberty, getting back. Ivory to Perry, quick three. That would have tied the game had it gone in, but it didn't. Not a bad shot, but you could have probably gotten something a little better, but Perry feeling the pressure to make something happen because Jawal is not in the game, knowing that the team needs his offensive scoring. That's Robinson in the corner, now Pacheco Ortiz. Coffee for three. Another miss in the rebound to Stetson. Great rebound by Jaleel Wallet. Liberty shooting has gone cold from beyond the arc. Really, other than McGee, everyone else has struggled from beyond the arc for Stetson, uh, for, for Liberty, excuse me. And McGee with that boxing one, it has shut him down this half so far. Perry with it, the Jones. Ivory, I think he thought about the three, but he'll drive it down the baseline. Kick out is poked away by Cuffey, and Stetson will return. Who's the X factor for the X, uh, for the Flames in regards to him shooting the basketball? Remember, he had 19 points in the loss against North Florida, so they've put a box in one. That means one guy is playing him man-to-man -man all over the floor, and everybody else is in a kind of a zone defense. Mohamed Jawara back in the game. Ivory tried to feed him, but that was kicked by a Flames player, and we're going to see a foul here on Liberty. Darius McGee, I believe, was called for it. So Stetson will reset here from the baseline. It's been a long time since Liberty has lost two games in a row. You have to go back nearly two seasons, Greg. Well, when they were in the Big South. So since being in the A-Sun, they've never lost back-to-back -back games. But the Hatters are going to try to rewrite the history books here this afternoon. And this is where you want it to be. If you started out this game saying that you're only down three at home by the number one team in the conference, Perry you for would three. Have taken that. No. And the rebound to Liberty. You had Jawara. Man on his back. He's on the block wide open. You've got to get the basketball in there to him right there. If you're Rob Perry, I mean, you could have gotten the ball back. You know, if they would have doubled him, he would have thrown it back out. Pacheco Ortiz driving in, but that's a wild shot off the glass and the rebound to Stetson. Terry Ivory will slow this down here near the arc, and there he goes to the big man, Juara. He's double teamed, breaks it, tries to go up, and he'll go to the line. Very lucky, very lucky, receiving it in the post, getting double teamed. Looks like the foul is going to be on Baxter Bell. And there's the good double team and the reaching in and grabbing of the arm by Baxter Bell. And now let's see if Jawara can earn it the hard way. He's done all right from the free throw line this game, 75%, three for four. Jawara with 19 points on seven of nine shooting in the win over the Highlanders. A lot of that came in the second half when the team started really force feeding it to him. And that's kind of where they found their offensive groove. Well, he was so efficient in that win against NJIT. He was seven for nine. So, you know, he made some good decisions with the basketball. And he gets both free throws here. That's the maturation process in his game thus far. There's a lot to like about this program right now in terms of future. Two big freshmen in Perry and Jawara. A lot of other freshmen playing vital roles like Ivory and Panzo. Holmesley will deliver to Pacheco Ortiz with got, 12 on the clock. Got away with a little push off on the right arm. And he'll drive in, tries to go up, and no good rebound, Rob Perry. Good defense by Rob Perry, the taller. Able to throw the shot off and block it by Pacheco, but comes back and turns it over on the other end. Pacheco Ortiz managing to strip it away from the freshman from Orlando, who had originally committed to Tulane, but then a coaching change there led him to reconsider, and Donnie Jones is glad he did. Holmesley trying to put back the rebound, it didn't go. Get something good here, you don't need to rush. You're getting down to five minute mark, it's a one point game. I, I think Liberty, they're shooting the basketball a little quicker than they normally would. Jones, that's Perry in the corner, gets the player up, and in, and Stetson has the lead for the first time in this game.
just a beautiful series of ball movement. Getting the ball in the post, they double him. What do you do? You put out, you move the basketball, extra pass, and parry because he's made those big threes. People running out at him. He was able to pump fake, take it to the basket. This Edmonds Center crowd is getting excited. Two home games, two double-digit comebacks in the second half. They closed it out against NJIT. Can they do it to Liberty? Jones with the steal. Driving into the lane. Gets it. Beautiful. Hatters up three. And Richie McKay has seen it off. He wants a timeout, and he'll get it. Just a big time vision of something good when you hire a coach. And Donnie Jones is a veteran guy, knows how to build programs. And, you know, this is a young team, young players. They are your future. Uh, you know, I often say the trees we grow today produce the fruit we eat tomorrow. <laughs> so this is a young Hatters team, and you're just looking at the beginning of them. Well, if it's anything like the fruit we're seeing now, Stetson's <laughs> in for some good times. Scotty James down low. Jawara on him. The big man will take it. And a travel, Stetson ball. Drug the pivot foot is what the officials are saying. So let's take another look at it. I know if well, we may not get a chance to see it, but he drugged the pivot foot and uh, the officials saw it. And that's an emphasis this year in college basketball, traveling violation. Jaleel Wadley now with the ball right wing. As we approach the four minute mark here in the second half. Perry trying to go around the screen. Jawara will set the pick. That's Jones driving in. Another wild shot off the bank, and he gets the kiss. And very well could have been the fifth foul on the A-Sun preseason player, Leah Holmesley. But the officials did not call it there, but a tough shot by Christian Jones. And you're going to need that from your upperclassmen the rest of the way here. Hatters with a five-point lead, their largest in the game so far. But no panic from Liberty. This is a veteran team. This is nowhere they haven't been before. And a foul really come on fire in the second half. Well, this is where you're going to earn your chops here. If you're a young team and the Hatters are, how to win games down the stretch. Pass down low. Scotty James catching it in the air and putting it in. And right away, Richie McKay comes out, runs a play where they overload on one side, and you have only one guy underneath posting up. And they throw opposite, and you get a nice, easy bucket to Scotty James. That's a play that's been working for Liberty in this game. We've seen it already three or four times. To throw over the top. You know, sometimes it's better to play behind the guy and try to uh, front in him when you know you don't have any help. Ivory, left hand, no. Rebound, Juara, up and in. The kiss off the glass. And nice. Stetson puts the lead back at five. Nice take by Ivory, you know, keeping the defense honest. Now people, uh, you know, Liberty, they're going to look at him. Well, this is the little guy. will take it to the basket. So they have to play him a little honest. He threw it up a little hard, but just Juara. A lot of times when big guys go for the block, somebody else is there to rebound it. Pacheco Ortiz missing again from three. He's been having a hard time from beyond the arc in this game, Greg. He has, man. He has struggled from the field. You know, he was our featured player. He's a coach on the floor. But again, you count him out. All-time winningest player in Liberty Flames history. So he understands the game and knows what's needed. He's one for 11 from the field, one of eight from three. Perry trying to put that up. Nice defense from Liberty. And the Flames will take the ball up as we near two minutes left in this game. Got to get a better shot than that if you're Rob Perry. You know, you're not going to, officials not going to bail you out, you know, when, when it's a situation like that. Pacheco Ortiz thought about the three. Maybe a bit gun shy right now. Cuffey will drive and gets the drop. Tough, tough runner there by the lefty. Cuffey all the way from Polka, West Virginia, knocking that down. So here we are, veteran laden team. They're not going to go up a game. And, and kids watch TV and, you know, they watch where they feel like they may have an opportunity to play and in coaching staffs, they reap the benefits of it a lot of times. So here we are, man, a, 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 a what, minute 40, minute 50 seconds left. The Hatters are gonna have to play smart. We said it at the top of the telecast, mentally, you're gonna have to be tough for 40 minutes. Not 38, not 39, 40. Stetson 137 away from a seismic upset in the A-Sun. A lot of basketball left. Jones, three, no. Jawara over the back, but Scotty James gets the rebound anyway. Good box out there by Scotty James, and not a bad shot by Christian Jones. He can make that. He had to shoot it. Clock winding down. That was a bit risky from Jawara going over the back yes. like that, no? Yes. Kick out the Cuffy for three. 
No. Long rebound in the hands of Christian Jones. And with one minute left, Hatter's up three. Cuffey ordinarily knocks down that shot, that three-pointer there. Had a good look at it. Had to rush it just a tad bit. Liberty has been dreadful from three-point land in the second half. No other way to put it. And it's given Stetson a chance. Ivory with five on the shot clock will drive. Off the glass, no. Rebound to Georgie Pacheco Ortiz. And Liberty with maybe their best chance to tie this game up right here, right now. Well, Terry Ivory had the ball with the shot clock winding down. He had to take a shot, and at least he took it to the basket. The Edmonds Center coming alive. James down low. No, it rolled around and out. And Liberty's going to have to foul here, and they do. Elijah Coffey will send Christian Jones to the line. Well, you got the shot that you wanted. Scotty James is tough in stats in this particular game. How well you've shot in a game right now. Only two hatters have gone to the line in this game, Jawara and Perry. Wow. Hatter seven for eight, though. Jawara five for six. And the inbound to Perry. And they foul. Yep, and risky. I think that's who you wanted if you're Donnie Jones. Yep, risky pass, but he had to get it in quick. If not, you know, it would have been a five-second call. I wanted to see a little more screen up and, you know, come to the ball by Hatters, but they were able to get it in. So now, uh, Mr. Perry, who is the one thing he hasn't done all season long is shoot free throws well. And I think it's just going to be a matter of him concentrating and working on it. And I know he shoots a ton of shots during practice. But, you know, free throws is all about, you know, that form, putting it up there soft and having the confidence, you know, and believing that you can make it. As my dad would always say, confidence is hard to get, but it's darn sure hard to get rid of. Well, he's got a chance to build some confidence here. He's two for two from the game, from the stripe. And one free throw would make it a two-possession game. Bit of, uh, bit of luck from the rim god, but he got it. Well, I think he put that in there just the way he needed it to, and and it, it, it rattled in a little hard, so he may be thinking about shooting this one a little softer, and the Hatters, everybody goes off the free throw line, they get back in defensive position. You know the Flames are going to have to push it up very quickly. And Perry sinks that one to make it a five-point lead. Liberty will push it. Pacheco Ortiz down the lane, trying to get a quick shot. He does, it's in, and the foul! That's what makes him so tough. Uh, I, I said it at the top of the telecast, he's the coach on the floor. He understands the game, he knows what his team needs, how to get a shot, and he's just taking his time, makes a pump, couple of pump fakes, and Jawara could not resist jumping at that because he's, you know what he's thinking, I'm gonna block this. And Pacheco Ortiz is tough. He's a tough competitor. And Jawara will take a seat now with his fourth foul. As Pacheco Ortiz, 95% free throw shooter gotta for the season. Got to get a good box out here if you're the Hatters. And he doesn't get it. That's only his third miss from the line all year. And they're going to call Raw Perry out of bounds. You know, he got the rebound, but looks like his right foot, I think, right went out. Touch pretty in back-to-back -back games. And timeout there as Pacheco Ortiz not in. You know, the big fella. So with 11 seconds left here, Pacheco Ortiz will try to inbound. Tight man to man as Holmesley gets it in. The three. No, James with the rebound, falls to the ground, loses the ball. And he's going to go to the line there because he kind of got the offensive rebound, tried to put it up in one motion without coming down, and he gets fouled. And it's Jawara with his fifth. So he's probably going back to the bench here, I would think. Kristen Jones will take uh, the spot at the paint here for Jawara as he'll grab a seat. Well, with Scotty James, not the best of free throw shooters in this lineup. I mean, he, he shoots a 62% from the free throw line, but he's getting two shots here. And the biggest thing of all is the Hatters are going to have to rebound a miss if he misses. 
So without Jawara in there, you know, having a good strong rebounder, it's going to be Rob Perry and Wesley Panzo. Now, if you're the Liberty Flames, you know, right away, you don't have to foul if he, you know, if he makes this. If he misses it, you have to foul. If he makes it, they can set up a defense, and they're going to have to go for the steal. If not, then get the foul right away. And the miss. Rebound to Perry. Tied up. Mm, no, that's not a tie-up. That'll be a foul. Yes, yes, it will. And, and you want to play percentages? You know, again, Scotty James, not your best free throw shooter. Obviously, he goes one for two in that instance, but a long rebound and credit Rob Perry for the box out and coming up with it. But and now, 4.1 seconds left. Sorry. And, yeah, and I, and I found it interesting that in that situation, Donnie Jones would go with two guys on the block there and Perry and Panzo, who are probably among his best free throw shooters, too. More yeah. than likely, yeah. they're getting fouled. It's one of them. Yeah, I mean, and he's probably one of your better rebounders, too. You know, he's, you know, he along with Jawara. So now you want to come up and you want to upset teams and you want to have that signature win. Here it is. You got to make these throws. One free throw would make it a three-point lead for Stetson. And he gets it. Another free throw would make it a two-possession game yes. and could effectively seal it. Got to have it here. And uh, Rob Perry has played sensational. The freshman from Orlando, Florida. Who's, he's been big in the second half. Yes, he has. He's had to be the offense when Gerrara, uh, you know, has been out the game with the foul trouble. He's been the only offense, and it's been a team effort by the Hatters so far. And the miss. Yeah, no, he wave it off. The line. He runs over the line before the ball touched the rim. So, so Liberty will inbound this. Liberty will inbound the basketball. And with 4.1, now one timeout left for Liberty. They do have one timeout, but this is a stationary spot for Elijah Cuffey. This is not a made free throw or made field goal, so he cannot run the baseline. Not much for Liberty. Pacheco Ortiz will grab it. They call the timeout. Or did they call the foul? I think, I think it might have been. The, the it's foul. the foul. It's on Ivory. Yeah, I think Ivory, and, and, and by instruction, was the foul. They didn't want to give up a three. I'm thinking right away, you see the foul there. Yeah, he fouled Pacheco. It would be Ortiz. a one-on-one -on -one for Liberty here. A one-on-one, -on -one and, you know, that's a, that's a coaching strategy, and that's a coaching decision. They don't want to give up a three-pointer. I'd rather give up two free throws. He's missed one already in this game. He misses two. The rebound from Panzo. And with 1.2 on the clock, the Hatters fans can feel it now. Donnie Jones and the Stetson Hatters on the verge of a huge upset in the conference. A team that only won three games all year in the a -Song is now on the verge of beating Liberty. Yeah, we take a look at the miss right there and the foul. And Pacheco Ortiz, he just can't believe it. I'm a 94% free throw shooter. So I, I, I've been, he's missed the last couple, and that's one he'd like to have back. But credit Weza for getting the rebound. And now let's see if he can go to the line and just really put this away. His first free throws of this game. Smooth as you like. Should be academic right now. Georgie Pacheco Ortiz all year long, Greg, had only missed two free throws. Yes. And he misses two in this game. Two big ones. Highly unlikely. But that's why you lace him up and play the game. Anything can happen. Stetson, cool as you like from the charity stripe. The heave is no good. And Donnie Jones. 